Hello everyone. As part of a special NBC program, I'm here in beautiful sandy Egypt to talk about one of America's most favorite pets, the house cat. The domesticated house cat that is so loved by so many families all over the world today was first appreciated in ancient Egypt. Despite common belief, the domesticated cat actually did not originate in Egypt. A study from 2007 demonstrates that the cat probably originated in Mesopotamia approximately 2,000 to 7,500 years before the rise of Egypt. This study used 2,500 base pairs of mitochondrial DNA to conclude this. However, it was in ancient Egypt that cats were first used for recreational purposes, not just for agriculture and their usefulness in catching rats. <laughs> the cats that were so revered in Egypt are actually very genetically similar to the domestic cat, house cat that we have now. A study from 1999 um, using mummified cats demonstrated that the cats skeletal structure lay in between the African wild cat and the current domesticated cat as a sort of hybrid. Another study from 1988 comparing the hair shafts of cats from these mummies also concluded that the hair shafts were most similar to the domesticated house cat that we have now. However, all of their cats would have been tabby in color. Next up in our program, we're going to be interviewing one of the leading researchers in ancient religions, PhD Elizabeth Goldsmith, to talk about whether cats were really considered gods in Egypt and what gods were cats. So, Professor Goldsmith, I hear you're one of the leading researchers specializing in the study of cats in the ancient world. Yes, that's true. I've spent the last 12 years traveling through what was ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt, learning as much as I can from the artifacts and the people. That cats in ancient Egypt weren't just loved for being the cute, cuddly companions that we see them as now. That's exactly correct. In fact, cats were regarded as sacred. Some of the Egyptians' most revered gods were depicted as cats. The goddesses displayed both values of felines that modern humans can relate to as well the violent and ferocious aspect, and the cuddling and nurturing one. Sekhmet, one of the daughters of the sun god Ra, demonstrates the powerful and terrifying aspect of cats that was so respected in the ancient world. She often appeared as having the head of a lioness, a symbol of her brutal power. Sekhmet was so powerful, she was even one of Ra's bodyguards. Myth has it that once, when Ra asked Sekhmet to teach mankind a lesson, the bloodbath could only be stopped by getting her drunk on wine the color of her victim's blood. Were all the feline goddesses as scary and violent as Sekhmet? That's a great question, and it turns out they weren't at all. One of the other most revered feline goddesses was Bastet, and while she was originally depicted as a goddess very similar to Sekhmet, she later transformed into the goddess of love, family, and protection. She represented the softer aspects of feline nature and thus was represented by a short black-haired house cat, not a lioness. This is a replica of one of the many sculptures crafted in her image. I know ancient Egyptians worshipped many gods. How important were the feline ones? Well, Sekhmet and Bastet alone were extremely important, but there's evidence that Egypt's arguably most important god, Ra, the sun god, was also sometimes depicted as a cat. In the Book of the Dead, the sacred text that every person needed to be buried with in order to be able to pass into the afterlife, there's mention of Ra turning into a cat. I actually have a printout of the page in the passage here, translated into English, obviously. I am the great cat beside whom the Isha tree was split in you on the night of active battle. The last part of our NBC special will be interviewing Dr. Robert Montanaro, who specializes in ancient Egyptian social life, on how cats were treated on a day-to-day -day basis. Hello, Dr. Montanaro. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to me a little bit about cats and how they interacted with humans in ancient Egyptian society. 
I understand that you specialize in this. Hi, yes. Um, I actually specialize in the Ptolemaic period, which is the period of time from 332 to 30 BCE, um, when Egyptian reverence of cats really reached its height. So, what can you tell me about how cats were treated by people during this time? Well, one of the common misconceptions you see is that uh, cats were worshipped as gods in ancient Egypt in, in this time period, um, when in fact they were just looked upon uh, with divine qualities, uh, meaning they had qualities of the Egyptian gods, not that they were gods themselves. So, were cats not revered? No, um, they were still quite revered. In fact, killing a cat was punishable by death. The Greek author Diodorus um, describes in his book, The Library of History, how if a cat was killed, it was often mummified, and the person who killed the cat was more than likely to be killed by a crowd of common people. So how were cats celebrated during this time period? Well, great and lavish festivals were often held celebrating these cats at the temples dedicated to Basit or Sekhmet. Um, but the temple with the you know, largest and la most lavish festival was the temple at Budapest. Uh, Herodotus' account of this festival states that more grape wine was drunk here than anywhere else during the year. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Montsonaro. Oh, I really appreciate it. Despite the genetic similarities between the cats that lived in ancient Egypt and the current domesticated house cat, the way cats were treated religiously is extremely different than how it is now. As you can see, cats are still worshipped today. Thank you all so much for joining me on my exploration of ancient Egypt and for learning about my personal favorite pet, the house cat. If you enjoyed our program this evening, please donate to NBC through our website, www.nbc.org, and to give me an A. Thank you very much, and good night.